Welcome to Russian History with Dr. Bravkin. Today I'd like to speak about Vladimir Putin. And the reason is that there were elections a couple of days ago in Russia, and this is a truly historical event in that Vladimir Putin won his fifth term and with absolutely incredible result of uh, 87% uh, with a participation of 77%. Uh, and the, the opposition, which was the communists, and they were well established for the last 30 years, uh, their candidate got 4.4%. Uh, the New People Party, which is the party of the business elites, um, people who would likely to support Navalny if he ran, got 3.5%. Uh, and the uh, the Zhirinovsky's uh, successor party, which is kind of like radical nationalist party, is 3.5 percent. What's also important that in Moscow, where the strongest opposition uh, feelings sometimes are registered, uh, was 6.5 percent for the New People Party, uh, which is the business party. So this is absolutely uh, astonishing success of President Putin uh, with. Um, incredible results and that means that millions and millions of people went and voted for him uh, they could have stayed home if they didn't want to so that shows that uh, he's truly popular i'd like to explain just why it seems to me he is perceived as a villain in the west uh, and as a hero in russia now, in the West, of course, we all know the reactions are very negative, the, the elections are called as fake, and he is a dictator, and he is a killer. Let me just try to explain uh, why he is popular. And there are good reasons for this, and this is actually treated at, at great length in my book, From Vladimir Lenin to Vladimir Putin, on the screen you could see, but I'd like to just give a few highlights so that to entice your interest. So the Putin years will come down in history as the Putin era. He's been in power for 24 years and if he lives to this to the end of this term it would be 2030 so it would be exactly 30 years almost a third of the 21st century. Uh, I break down this period into three uh, and that would be uh, from 2000-2008 and that's the period when he's a westernizer. The second period from 2012, when he replaced President Medvedev, to 2022, uh, and that would be the period of a great challenge and changing the course of Russian history and or Russian political um, orientation towards the East. And finally, uh, the last period of 2022 to the present, and that is a uh, a period of the complete and total break with the West and a military confrontation with NATO in, um, in Ukraine. So let's start with the first period. The first period starts when he's replaced President Yeltsin. Uh, and this, of course, I have three videos on the 1990s. You could find them in the Russian history <laughs> list. But the point is, Russia was in a very, very bad situation. It was really a catastrophe just about in every field. Economic collapse, uh, the uh, corruption in all spheres, including in the army. Uh, the unpaid wages, you know, thousands of factories that closed down and people were on the books but were not paid, uh, prostitution, crime, a time when the police was indistinguishable from mafia. Uh, it, was, it was really uh, crooked elections of 1996, the shelling um, of the parliament by President Yeltsin in 1993. The 90s was a catastrophe and I don't want to dwell on it. This is what Putin inherited and he had to deal with it. Uh, so wh why uh, was he, why he was chosen? Uh, I explain it in the book in that Putin was acceptable to all. On the one hand, he was a westernizer, which means that he guaranteed that there will be no rollback of privatization. On the other hand, he was a nationalist uh, and a protege of Primakov, uh, and this is the uh, foreign minister who turned his flight in the middle 
uh, en route to Washington after Yugoslavia was bombed. So he earned these credentials of defending Russian interests and standing up to the West. Uh, so he was a protege of Primakov, uh, so he was acceptable to Russian nationalists and communists. And finally, he, was, he had very strong terms uh, against the secessionists in uh, Chechnya, uh, and the terrorists there, and so he also uh, solidified these credentials and as a nationalist. At the same time, he had good relations with Yeltsin, and Yeltsin was not afraid uh, by passing on uh, the torch to Putin that he would be tried for all kinds of crimes that he had committed during his tenure. So Putin took over and nobody thought that he would last. In fact, Berezovsky, one of the oligarchs, thought uh, the, the, the rumor is that he told him, you're going to rule for a few years and then after that we'll give you enough money to retire somewhere where you would prefer. Now, uh, he confronted uh, several issues which I describe in the book and one of them was the oligarch problems, which is that the oligarchs, Berizovsky, Gusinsky, Khodorkovsky, all these people, they privatized huge industries into their own pockets and ran it into their own interest, not interest of Russia, and Putin managed to turn it around. Uh, and the details are there in the book, you could read it, you could also read Richard Sakwa, excellent book about these years, how Putin resolved the oligarch problems. The bottom line is that the oligarchs stopped being a problem. Uh, the message was you obey the interests of the state or you get out. Uh, and that was essentially some were chose to get out, some obey Putin's orders, uh, and they serve the country rather than their pockets uh, exporting billions to the West. The next was the governor problem. The governors basically did whatever they want and were hardly different from organized crime, lining their pockets with all kinds of contracts and budget funds that they had. So Putin found a very long struggle with changing the procedure of the elections and selections. He was accused of being a dictator. Finally, he found a way to have them both elected, but at the same time uh, controlled by the central government. Uh, and this was the governor problem. Uh, then he restored actually the rule of law. Uh, the West doesn't accept it, but, uh, but many people in Russia do, in that in the 1990s, the only way of s dispute resolution was sending the killers uh, in, uh, in mafia disputes over property. Putin managed to create a system of law of uh, conflict resolution and property resolution by means of law. And there are no mafia killings uh, anymore. And if there are, there's just a few rather than in the thousands as there were before him. Uh, so critics say that it was not enough, that there's still uh, you know, organized crime. Well, that is probably true, but he did uh, revert to uh, the rule of law in all kinds of civil cases in uh, uh, all kinds of disputes and in criminal cases as well. So this was another one. The most important achievement of that time was that Russia had about 8 up to 10% growth. Uh, in foreign policy, this is the time when he was the friend of Berlusconi and of Chirac and of Jean Chancellor Schroeder and when he spoke to the Bundestag and when they signed the contracts of Russian exports of oil. It was like a huge cooperation uh, and the time when all the Western countries were building factories, which the United States didn't like and wanted to find a way to stop it. Uh, in domestic policies, this is what the cornerstone of his success is that he created a so-called mother capital program, which actually welcomed motherhood and provided help for especially poorer families so that they could have afford to have children. He started raising the pensions and paying them on time. He started building uh, hospitals and schools all over Russia uh, and, and people did notice. He restored agriculture, which for the first time in history uh, returned to exporting grain and that produced more grain uh, than the Soviet Union ever could master with the catastrophic uh, collectivization of Stalin. So and now we come to the second period, which is after President Medvedev, the second period of the 
2012 to 22, and this was a period of uh, many serious challenges and changes. The most important one was the coup d'etat in Ukraine, which uh, turned Ukraine overnight into a protege of the Department of State in the United States uh, and the creation of Ukrainian bases for the Americans, chemical bases, bacteriological weapon bases, military bases. The British uh, had a base on the Black Sea. In other words, uh, Ukraine was slowly slipping out uh, of Russian orbit of friendship and uh, neighborly relations and turning into a NATO country de facto. So this led to war of 2022. Uh, this was of course a time of uh, Crimea refused to be a part of this and Donbass rebelled and these are the antecedents of today's war. Now uh, also in this period the two important events. In 2015 uh, Russian intervene, Russians intervened in Syria and sent a message to Washington that uh, Russia is back as a country that would play a role in the Middle East and he defended Syrian government from uh, the onslaught of the terrorists who were supposed to be moderate and whom the Americans supported. And finally in 2018 uh, he announced that Russia has invented hypersonic weapons and this was dismissed totally. The West was laughing at it. Russia is a gas station uh, with nuclear weapons. I mean what is Russia? It was very derogatory and dismissive attitude to Russia in the teens under Obama and then all of a sudden uh, they claimed to have discovered new weapons that were superior to those in the West. That in itself seemed impossible. But now now everybody knows they are there and they're working. Uh, so um, this is uh, the time when Putin built up his reputation as a person who is dearly loved by many Russians. Let me explain why. Every year, uh, in, in, at the end of the year, he had a four hour long conference, a call in from all Russia and, and they were asking him all kinds of questions. The salaries are not being paid and the kindergarten has, doesn't have the lighting and there were all kinds of issues that people were calling in from all over and they were monitoring these thousands of questions and he would turn them live. I remember one that particularly struck me. There was a woman who called from the um, Donbass area and she was a refugee in Russia and she was saying that by law she was supposed to get easy access to Russian citizenship and she was not given this. So Putin called the governor on the spot live and ordered them to take action. So this kind of a hands-on presidency that he is supposed to know everything and take care of everything is unprecedented in the West. The, the, the Western presidents just don't do that kind of stuff. I doubt whether President Biden knows how much is a gallon of milk and I wonder if what would be a reaction of President Macron uh, if somebody asked him about a, you know a kindergarten with a le leaking roof. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that created him a reputation. He cares. This is a president who cares for the common people and this is why they responded this way. Uh, now in the last elections Putin focused on a few things uh, about the future of Russia which I also think probably brought him this kind of uh, popularity. Uh, in his speech to in, in the last uh, interview to uh, Kisilyov he mentioned all kinds of things that Western presidents just don't do. He said we have a program of uh, mat maternity support and children with uh, f families with three children would get a reduction in mortgage. Now American presidents don't have anything to do with mortgage except interest rates and they don't support any mothers with two three kids or whatever. Uh, he had a program with for students. Uh, the education is free. The medical care is free. He had the program for talent talented students. Um, he had a program announced for pensioners and their graduated uh, pension that would keep up with inflation if there is any. He had a program for 
a scientist and he assured the businessmen that the tax rate would be predictable, stable, and there'll be absolute guarantee of private property. In other words, to every group of population, he had something very specific and very concrete. Uh, and then that means that the people actually love him. Now, if I remember Machiavelli, he said that a, a leader is either loved or uh, hated. Uh, or feared. And I should say, yes, there are people who fear uh, Putin, and there are some, very few in Russia, who hate him. Uh, those are usually Western-oriented, like Navalny and his supporters, and those now are increasingly losing any chance of any success, because the Russians now fear see how the West treats Russia, sending the missiles that shoot into Russia, supporting Ukrainian regime that uh, sends bombs into neighborhoods in uh, Bryansk and in Belgorod and uh, in um, Donetsk and so forth. So all these measures of Western support for Ukrainian government that actually is killing civilians are perceived by Russian as an attack on Russia. And that is why Putin's popularity is even higher than it otherwise would be. Now, and there's one last thing, and that is the, uh, the moral issue. Uh, Putin takes a very strong case that Russia is a country of conservative Christian values. He, this is a, another break with the West, not just strategic and economic, but the moral one. He claims that uh, Europe has abandoned Christianity and that Russia is the keeper of Christianity and it's appealing to the global South in defense of traditional values of families and children. Uh, and he's doing something specific about it. There are no gay parades in Russia, and rather than being shamed for it, Russia is uh, proud of it. Well, Russia is not succumbing to this um, perverse culture uh, of, of woke rejectionist of uh, traditional values and uh, older heroes. So uh, in all kinds of ways, uh, this is a subject of a separate presentation. There's a, a, a total break with the West. And at the same time, uh, in the West, he's a villain, but in Russia, he is a hero. He is somebody who is uh, praised as a person who probably is the best Russian ruler since Alexander the second. Okay, thank you very much and I hope you will continue writing your comments and I'll be happy to answer uh, as much as I can. And until next edition of uh, Russian History with Dr. Brovkin.